Live with CDP Sports Talk, a weekly sports and entertainment podcast sponsored by Barry Cullen Chevrolet. Live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn. And on audio via Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, Anchor FM, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Radio Public, and TuneIn. Now, here's your host, Chris Palme. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Season 6, Episode 16, Overall 291 today of Live with CDP Sports Talk, sponsored by Barry Cullen Chevrolet Dealership at 905 Woodlawn Road West in the Guelph Auto Mall. Check out barrycon.com for the newest selection of new and pre-owned GM vehicles, or give Barry Cullen Chevrolet a call at 519-824-0210, or email them at info at barrycon.com. Live with CDP Sports Talk is on weeknights at 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern on radio station WQEE 99.1 FM, the home of Southern Talk in sports in the metro Atlanta area as well. Uh, Sometimes my show is going to be delayed due to Columbus Hoots baseball that is on uh, during the summertime on WQEE 99.1 FM as well. Shout out to their uh, station manager, Ryan O'Neill, for having me on their station the last five months. And a shout out to Mark Cullen from Barry Cullen Chevrolet for sponsoring this show as well. I'm looking forward to my guest today. This is his third appearance on Live with CDP Sports Talk. His name is Mike Farwell. He is the host of the Mike Farwell Show uh, weekdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on City News 5 City in Kitchener. He's also the longtime voice of the Kitchener Rangers on 570. And he's also the founder of Farwell for Hire, which we're going to talk about today as well. Good afternoon, Mike. How are you doing? Hey, Chris, I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? Good. Well, thank you so much for coming back on my show for a third time. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. How's the radio business in Kitchener right now? Well, the radio business in general is a little bit uh, stressful these days after you probably heard one of the major players made some pretty deep cuts about a week ago. So, you know, it always always makes you wonder about your life choices to be honest with you but overall no complaints i'm still collecting a paycheck well that's good and uh like i said mike i've been doing this for now almost uh three and a half years and uh i have a passion for it and i've been very lucky to get guests on such as yourself i'm grateful to have been asked i really do appreciate it all right. Well, today, if you're okay with this, we're going to talk about your uh, Farwell for Hire and fundraising and, and how you started it up and, and uh, what made you start it up as well, um, which leads to my first question. Can you tell my audience here in Guelph and internationally uh, just about Farwell for Hire and how did you start it up back in 2014? Yeah, it's a fundraising campaign that I do every year in the month of May. I chose the month of May because May is Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Month and the fundraiser uh, supports cystic fibrosis research. So this is a cause that's very near and dear to my heart. Cystic fibrosis is the most common fatal genetic disease affecting young Canadian children. And two of my sisters were also born with cystic fibrosis. Uh, They passed away now coming up on 30 years ago, but I certainly saw while they were alive, how it impacted their life living with cystic fibrosis, the treatments they had to undertake, the medications they had to be on constantly, et cetera. So I have a very good understanding of the toll that cystic fibrosis takes, not just on a family, but specifically on the individual. And so after losing my sisters, I decided to get involved and try to make a contribution in some way to funding the research, which has been just going incredibly over the last 30 years or so. The advances in medical research around cystic fibrosis have been simply phenomenal, and they've made all kinds of incredible accomplishments, including more now than doubling the life expectancy from when my sisters were alive. In the last couple of years, uh, the average life expectancy or the median age, pardon me, for somebody 
living with cystic fibrosis has now gone beyond 50, which is just an incredible figure considering that my sisters died one when she was 24, the other when she was just 18. So specific to Farwell for Hire, like you asked, it's a long way of getting around to the answer, but I thought I'd give you a bit of the background. I, I actually started the whole campaign with a tweet. Uh, Twitter, I was kind of new to, I think all of us were back around 2014 when it was really coming into its own. And I used the hashtag uh, Farwell, the number four hire, because my idea was to just hire myself out for odd jobs in exchange for a donation to cystic fibrosis. And, and the reason I did that is because for many years, I'd been going out like so many of us do. And when the annual walk to make cystic fibrosis history would come along, I'd reach out to my contacts and my network and say, hey, would you make a donation? Would you sponsor me? And to be honest with you, Chris, I just got tired of asking people year after year. So I said, maybe I can offer something in return. And so that was the thing I offered in return, my services to do odd jobs, cut your grass, I'll wash your windows, I'll weed your garden, whatever it turns out to be. And here we are now just wrapping up our 10th annual fundraising campaign. But that first year, it was one tweet that started it. The entire thing was done on social media and, and social media alone. And uh, I'm really pleased to say it's been a tremendous success over the past 10 years. You always, always hear the negative sides of social media and technology, but in your case, it really helped start this fundraiser. Yeah, it really did. I mean, I could spend a whole episode with you talking about the negative side of social media. I think we all experience that every day, but this is absolutely harnessing the power of social media for good. Twitter and Facebook is where it all started for me. Awesome. And I was just reading up today, Cystic Fibrosis Canada announced uh, recently uh, nearly $2.7 million in new research funding. And some of that is from your uh, fundraising. And how satisfying is it knowing that you're contributing and, and helping out with the research and hopefully one day finding a cure for this? Yeah, that really does mean a lot to me. I mean, I've stayed connected to what we would call the CF community here in the region of Waterloo and even more broadly in southwestern Ontario. I know what these families are going through and if I can help them in any way at all, that is a really gratifying feeling for me. And, and the other thing I love about it is that the, the best cystic fibrosis research is being done right here in Canada. You can look no further than McMaster in Hamilton or Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto to find some of the best and the brightest minds in the world working on these uh, research advancements. And, and I'm just, I'm tickled pink because of that, to be honest with you. All right, and that leads to my next question, Mike. Uh, what were some of the challenges, if there were, of starting up Farwell for Hire? And what do you enjoy the most? I guess you already answered that question. What do you enjoy the most about your fundraising work uh, with the community of Kitchener Waterloo? And how supportive has the community been with uh, Farwell for Hire over these years? As far as barriers to beginning the campaign and overcoming those challenges, I, I, I can't think of one. I mean, I, I started this all by myself, uh, having no idea really what it would look like or how it would turn out. Like I said, it was just uh, having grown tired of asking people to make a donation. I didn't want to just keep asking. I thought maybe there's something I can offer in return. And like I said, I put it out over social media and people would respond to me that way or they could find me you know, through my work with my email address or whatever. But I, I didn't really know. I didn't know anything about anything. I didn't know how this would work. I, in the first year that I did this, I actually talked to some local business owners that I knew and I asked them because I thought it would be most important for me to have something to do on the weekends. I was still doing my job every day while this campaign was going on. I always have every year. I still go to work Monday to Friday and, and do my job. And then I do my fundraising around that. So, you know, that can mean sometimes finishing my show at two o'clock in the afternoon and going out to three different jobs, you know, weed a garden here, wash some windows over there, you know, attend an event over here, and, and that would fill out the rest of my day. So I asked those business owners in that first year if they would give me a shift at their store. I knew a guy at a Tim Hortons. I knew a guy with a Dairy Queen. I knew a guy with a butcher shop. And I just said, will you, will you give me a shift on Saturday in the month of May and whatever my pay would be, like one of your employees, just donate that to the charity for me. 
and they said yes and they were more generous than you know i got the donation was greater than what my wages would have been but you know those were some of the things i did early on just because i didn't want it to be a flop and i wanted to look like i was actually doing this for higher peace but I, I i guess you know when i look back the biggest flop could have been that nobody took me up on it but they did and honestly the challenges have only grown in the years since because every year i get one year older i'm getting no less busy i've got a family that i like to spend time with there are all kinds of challenges now and, and there's a competition for my time and again especially not getting any younger it's it's exhausting by the end of may for sure so those are some of the challenges that have kind of emerged but i never foresaw them i didn't know this thing was <laughs> was even gonna work so here we are i've loved every minute of it i'm so grateful to the community and, and everyone who's responded to this the way that they have and you know i i'm just I'm I'm over the moon. The, my favorite part of this is just how successful this goofy little idea has become. Have you um, hired some people to help you out with this campaign as well, Mike? I tried. And, you know, I've had lots of great friends who say year after year, like, let, let us help you take some of the burden off and, and do some of these things. But I'll be honest with you, Chris, it just never worked out from a logistics perspective. Like it could be a random Tuesday night where I need help and you start running down your list of people that said they would help and they've got lives, they've got things to do. So, and, and I didn't want to be somebody who was running a charitable campaign and I was only the logistics coordinator. I did want to be involved. The whole point of this was to get my hands dirty and and meet people and say, thank you. And you know, do the job that they've asked me to do. So it never is. The idea was always there. It People still say you need to get a little team put together. It just doesn't work that way. It hasn't worked out anyway for me. And maybe that's my fault and I can't let go of things. It could be part of it too, but it just hasn't come uh, come to pass. Who came up with your logo, Mike? Oh, that's a great question. So I've often credited this young man. His name is Tiago. Uh, his uh, his wife, Samantha, was an old friend of mine, and she's in the marketing and communications business. And so she reached out before a campaign started I, six years ago, maybe seven, and said, me and my husband, Tiago, would like to help out. I've got some ideas that might help on the, the promotion side. He's a graphic designer, blah, blah, blah. I said, sure. So my wife and I sat down with them for dinner one night. And at that first meeting, Tiago put in front of me uh, a little binder with this logo. He created it all by himself and they had it used in various different ways. It was, I, I was blown away. And, and I've said many times since then and right to his face, he put this campaign on the map because all of a sudden it was a thing. It's an identifiable logo. We've got merchandise with the logo on it. Uh, if it wasn't for Tiago and Sam, I'm not sure we would have seen some of the growth that we saw since they came along. For my audience and they're interested, how would they go about buying some of your merchandise or your t-shirts and stuff like that? We've got everything on our website, farwellforhire.com. I know you've got that scrolling on the screen right now, and I appreciate it. Anybody just listening, it's farwell, the number four, hire.com, and you'll find everything you need right there. Okay, I think that's awesome, which leads to my next question, Mike. I'm not sure you'll be able to answer it right now since we're only, uh, I guess we're, actually, I was thinking about it today. We're already on June 21st. It's like, where where is the time in the month gone? Yeah, well, my family keeps asking me that, too. I was just joking, or my daughter was joking with me last night because I had just come from a golf tournament where a group of local investment bankers had reached out and said, listen, we're doing our golf tournament. We want to have a charitable partner for it. We want you to be that charitable partner. It came together so fast, but it was on June the 20th. And usually, like I said, this campaign, the very first time I did it, my plan was, I, I always knew I wanted to do it in May because that's Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Month, as I said earlier. It, that turned out to be one of the, the happy accidents of all of this because May is just as the weather is starting to improve, people want work done around their yards, in their gardens, et cetera. So it turned out there was no shortage of work. But my plan that first year was to 
do the firewall for hire piece up until the Sunday of the walk to make cystic fibrosis history. And that's always the last Sunday in the month of May. So I thought I'll show up at the walk and just like every other year, bring all the money we've collected through sponsorships and donations, pledges and stuff. And I'm going to take all my money there for that walk day. Well, even that first year, the campaign went so well that I didn't end on the last Sunday of the month. I, I went to the walk and I celebrated with the CF community. And then I went out and continued doing jobs for the rest of the month. So over the years, May has always had more than 31 days in my calendar. So I joke if I go until June the 4th or June the 5th, that's like May 35th or May 36th. The way it worked out this year, we've had some longstanding partners who have just been so generous to us since day one. And one of those partners is helping us out with an event on June the 25th. And when we started planning this, we just couldn't make schedules work. They were busy. I was busy. The next thing you know, we're talking about June the 25th. So you might as well call it the end of June, which almost makes it like a two month campaign. And so, like I said, my daughter was teasing me last night because I had just come back from a golf tournament and she said, it's June the 20th. You've been doing this for two months now. Wow. And I have, I, I didn't, I didn't do as much work in June. I finished the for hire piece when I was going out to people's places to wash their cars or cut their grass and all of that stuff on June the 4th. But we've had a number of events since then that are all helping us raise more money, but we're ready for this one to wrap up. So again, it's a a long answer to your question about how much has been raised. I can't answer that quite yet. I can tell you that we for sure made 108,000 plus on our 50-50 draw. So super excited about that. And I'm I'm really hoping that by the time we count up everything this year, we're going to be able to announce a campaign worth more than $200,000. That is awesome. Now, Mike, since I have you on here, what are some of the oddest odd jobs you've done so far in your time doing this? <laughs> Honestly, you can you can take your pick about, you know, jobs that you might not even imagine doing. The one I always talk about is cleaning the sheath of a horse i didn't even know that was a job and somebody asked me years ago to do this and i googled it and i got back to the person and i said i i don't think this is something that uh, you know an everyday joe should do i think you need to be a veterinarian to do this and she assured me no no the horse owners horse people do this for their horses all the time she just couldn't do it this particular time because she was pregnant. So it involves a, a male horse has a sheath. I'm just going to be blunt with you here that contains its genitalia, but dirt can get up inside that sheath and it cakes onto the inside. So I had to don a rubber glove, a latex glove. I had to apply the proper lubricant and cleaning solution. And I had to insert my hand up and under the horse inside that sheath to essentially scrape away at the dirt on the inside and clean it out for the horse Bailey. Uh, So it was very strange for me, but I thought, what the heck, I'll do it for a donation. And there have been, you know, a few things like that since I I had to castrate a young bull (laughs) one time. I did a brake job on on a race truck that was actually in the city of Guelph way back when and so yeah all kinds of things if you if you can think it this year one of my favorites was getting on the back of a garbage truck i think every young boy watched that garbage truck when they were a kid and thought wouldn't that be cool to get on the back sometime hang off and do the work and so i got to do that this year too that's awesome have you thought about one day mike later on in your career about writing a book about some of the odd jobs you did with your far off for hire many people have mentioned it before i don't know that i have a book in me chris i i don't know that it's something i could bring myself to do i i think they're fun stories i love talking about them because this whole campaign started on social media there is everything's documented online and it's funny every once in a while one of my facebook memories will pop up and i'll go back and look at what I wrote on that day doing that particular job for Farwell for Hire. And I do get a kick out of it, but I I don't know that I, I don't know that I have it in me to write a book. 
All right. You mentioned an event on June 25th. Did you want to just tell my audience a little bit about your next event in a couple of days? I would love to do that because if you're listening and you're interested, you will not be disappointed. We're going to be having a barbecue at a great little restaurant in downtown Kitchener called the Lab Street Eats. So from two until five on Sunday, June the 25th, just go to the lab it's at the corner of Victoria Street South and Oak Street, not far from Victoria and King in Kitchener. We're going to have a big barbecue. They make amazing food. And all proceeds are going to go to Farwell for Hire. So I've been kind of building this up as best I can as our 10th annual campaign, big finale, the big barbecue bash. So come on out, get yourself some delicious food and help us raise even more money for this year's campaign. And they can find more information about that on farwellforhire.com. That's the best place to go. Okay, definitely. Um, next question I was going to ask you, Mike. Um, I've learned about listening skills, so I've already skipped a few questions because you've already answered. What are your thoughts on uh, Farwell for hiring over the year for hire over the years raising one million dollars in donations from two thousand since two thousand and fourteen? I still have a hard time wrapping my head around that number, and when you say it out loud, it still it still catches me. So. When I was younger and I started out in radio, I always had in the back of my mind that maybe someday I could be a part of a fundraising campaign using the platform that I'm given on the radio every day. Maybe I could build it up into something and do some sort of fundraiser for cystic fibrosis because it's so meaningful to me. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if one day I was able to raise $100,000 for cystic fibrosis. Well, what's happened is we raise $100,000 every year <laughs> with our Farwell for Hire campaign. And I think back on that first campaign in 2014, and we raised $20,000. And then the next year, it was $28,000, and then $47,000, and then a huge leap up to $88,000. And it's just been going on a crazy curve up ever since. So to reach the $1 million plateau after our ninth campaign last year, it definitely brought tears to my eyes. And I just asked myself, well, now what do you do, dum-dum? Like, what do you do for an encore for that? So we just went back out and tried our best to raise as much more money as we could this year. And one thing about social media too, it's not just a local Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge area. Anybody can uh, help out or donate through your website as well, through social media. Yeah, you know, I've I've loved the the reach that the campaign has had. A, a friend of mine, I went to high school with them, who now lives over in the UK, has latched on to it. Uh, another one who was in Czechoslovakia or the Czech Republic, pardon me, latched on to it. We met a CF family in Germany that latched on to our campaign. I've made a good friend down east who also has a son with cystic fibrosis, we've connected over this. And one of my favorite stories of all, much more localized, but that partner I mentioned that's been with us since day one, who's behind helping out with this big barbecue bash on Sunday at the Lab Street Eats in downtown Kitchener, he would do a barbecue for us every year. And as the years went on, it would raise, like I, I, the one time we raised over $4,000 you know, cooking up hamburgers and hot dogs. It was incredible stuff. But while we were there one year, I met a mother and her son, Trey. And she came and she introduced herself. And I met Trey, who was just a like a one or a two-year-old, just a, a baby at the time. But she had come to Waterloo from Listowel, pardon me, from Wingham, which is about an hour and 15 minutes away. And she'd come all the way down to Waterloo just because she had heard about this Farwell for Hire campaign and wanted to see what it was all about and wanted to meet me and, you know, thank me for it and all things like that. But to, for, for it to have reached that far through the CF community that she was motivated, I'm going to drive, you know, an hour 15, an hour and a half to Waterloo just to go to this barbecue and see what this is all about. That was pretty special for me. Well said, Mike, and, and thank you for sharing that as well. Um, in terms, you've already answered the first part of this question about how supportive the KAW community in Ontario has been in terms of the for, for hire. 
how's it been with local businesses coming aboard sponsorships? I, I honestly can't say enough about the support I get in this community from both individuals and businesses. And, and obviously, if it wasn't for that business support, I never would have been able to grow the campaign the way that it has grown. You know, you're not going to raise a million dollars, 50 bucks at a time, mowing people's grass, right? So, uh, I, I mean, I could start to list them, Chris, but then I'm going to miss somebody. But just to give you an example, I mean, there's a family we met recently. They own TLC Pet Food in New Hamburg. They've got an amazing system. They've got amazing food they deliver right to your door. But we met them a couple of years ago, and they absolutely knocked our socks off the first year we met them. Uh, with a five thousand dollar donation it just uh, we don't usually get that kind of money in one stop and they've increased that over the years and and this year they kind of put the bug in the ear of another friend of theirs who owns an aluminum and brass foundry in new hamburg and he reached out it was completely out of the blue and said he'd like to make a donation and i went there to pick up a ten thousand dollar check and stuff like that just I mean, it gives me goosebumps just saying it. So we've been just overwhelmed and, and enormously grateful for the support we've received. Mike, and I, and, I, and I meant to do this before, but after we're done today, I would like to make a donation as well, not just for you coming on, but just because I think it's a great cause and I think what you're doing is just amazing work. I really do appreciate that, sir. Thank you very much. Are you okay for a couple more questions, Mike? Sure. Okay. Um, I know your 50-50 raffle draw was just, I believe, recently June 16th. Do you know when your next 50-50 raffle draw will be? I will not do another one until another Farewell for Hire campaign. So okay. at least 11 months. <laughs> okay. So I missed out on that, but people can still make donations online, correct? Absolutely. All right, and let's see. We already answered that question. So uh, let's see. Uh, how can um, the second part of this question, Mike, is how can they contact you through your website? Yeah, if you visit farwellforhire.com, farwell the number four hire.com, there's contact info right there, and it comes directly into our uh, inbox. It's it's easy as well. It's farwellforhire at gmail.com. So we're always happy to hear from you. And uh, this question I wanted to ask you too, Mike, where again can my audience follow you on social media? And uh, when does the Mike Farwell Show air weekdays on City News 570 in Kitchener? Well, you can follow me on social media pretty much everywhere. Uh, I am on Twitter at Farwell underscore WR and at Farwell underscore OHL for more of the hockey stuff. Uh, I'm on Instagram at Farwell underscore WR. And then Facebook has a Farwell for Hire page and a Mike Farwell show page. So you can find my social media channels there. And the show itself is on 10 until 2 weekdays on City News 570. So Monday to Friday, starting at 10 and going until 2, you can listen to the Mike Farwell show. And um, you're also the host of the OHL podcast. When is your next episode going to be out? Next episode will be out on Friday. So the episodes come out every Tuesday and Friday. On Tuesday, it's uh, a look around the league and talking about you know stories from the league. And then on Fridays, there's a feature interview with a former player or official or manager. Take your pick. And we just you know hear some uh, old war stories about the OHL. It's been a lot of fun to do. So. I'm going to wrap up at the end of the month and take a summer break, and then we'll be back at it in September. September is not that far away for training camp. It's definitely not. So if you just look up the OHL podcast anywhere you get your podcasts, you'll find me there. All right, Mike. Uh, we're going to wrap this up, but hopefully I can have you come back on again in the future, and we'll talk maybe a little bit about the 23-24 Kitchener Rangers and, and what, you what you're looking forward to next season, especially at the Kitchener Memorial Auditorium. Thanks, Chris. It's always a pleasure talking to you, and I look forward to seeing you around the rink pretty soon. Yes, I've been back to the odd for Titan games, but I need to go to a Ranger game at the odd since March 83. So I will come down for a Rangers game this year at the odd. Sounds good. I look forward to that.
Mike, I want to say thank you so much for giving us some time today and talking about uh, f Farwell for Hire and some uh, uh, cystic fibrosis as well. And the, and the website in Canada is cysticfibrosis.ca as well. Uh, again, Mike, thank you so much. Continued success with the radio career and also with your uh, fundraising as well. Thanks, buddy. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, Mike. Have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, guys, that was Mike Farwell, the host of the Mike Farwell Show, weekdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on City News 570 in Kitchener. He's also the longtime uh, radio play-by-play -play voice of the Kitchener Rangers of the Ontario Hockey League, and he's also the founder of Farwell for Hire, which is a, a charity uh, fundraiser for cystic fibrosis here in Canada. And again, cystic fibrosis in Canada recently on June 8th announced a uh, raised $2.7 million in new research funding as well. And I'm going to put that website on here as well, guys. Uh, you guys can either go to far farwellforhire.com or you guys can check out cysticfibrosis.ca as well. Guys, before we wrap up, uh, last weekend I covered the Canadian Baseball Hall Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame ceremonies in St. Mary's, Ontario. If you've never been to the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame in St. Mary's, Ontario, I would say it's a must-see. And I want to say thank you to Scott Crawford, the Director of Operations for the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame, for inviting me as a media member. And I did get to uh, interview Jesse Barfield, his son Josh Barfield, who played in Major League Baseball, John Olerud and Mike Wilner from the Toronto Star. So in the next week or two, guys, I'm going to air some of my interviews from the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. And this year they had six introductees. Uh, they had John Olerud and Jacques Doucette from the class of 2020. And then this year, 2023 class, Jesse Barfield, Rich Harden, uh, Joe Winchar, and Dennis Bouchard as well. Just bear with me, guys. I'm going to show you a clip of... Uh, Fergie Jenkins, who was there as well, as they uh, named the roadway after the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame, the Fergie Jenkins Way. Here's a clip from my YouTube channel. Family. <laughs> and, win and losing. Yeah. Winning is so important. So I've been fortunate in that respect to play on some great organizations. First, the Phillies, Cubs, Texas, and Boston. Texas and Chicago twice. Some of the organizations uh, have really, really embraced what I did as, as an athlete. I learned how to win early as a Philadelphia Philly. I tell people all the time, if it wasn't for Cal McClish in 1963 teaching me the slider, good things wouldn't have happened for me. Uh, that slider really, as a pitcher, it just makes you. I mean, it makes you a lot easier to get hitters out. It's a tough pitch to pick up. Uh, you jam a lot of hitters. Hitters don't hit the ball quite as far, but when you hang them, they go 400 feet. <laughs> Believe me, I've done it a few times. But this is quite an honor to have a, a street named after you, especially here with the Canadian Hall of Fame. I enjoy coming back every year and having that honor. And I've told Scott Crawford a few times, I enjoy listening to what they have to say because it's an honor getting uh, inducted into any kind of Hall of Fame. And believe me, uh, it's, it's an honor to put that jacket on these individuals because they've earned it. You don't get that honor without earning it. Hard work, diligence, and just tolerate that you think that uh, you deserve it. And, and in fact, you do deserve it because if you didn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't earn it. But what was nice, is that the new inductees this year, the sixth honor, believe me. Uh, during the COVID situation, a few guys didn't come, but now they're here and that honor is gonna be bestowed on them. And I, I, when I think about it, without the Hall of Fame here and playing sometimes for the Canadian city, a Canadian franchise, too bad Montreal's not still here, but Toronto's here, right? The Blue Jays? <laughs> Any Blue Jay fans? But, but that's important to still have a Canadian city represented in the major leagues. Uh, yeah, that's quite an honor. And to be an individual that plays in that organization, believe me, it is 
some kind of trust because you trust what you do on and off the field because the fans see you. And that's so very, very important to have the trust of the fans because they believe in you. They wouldn't buy a ticket to come see you play if they didn't. So that's what the game is all about. But believe me, to have a, a street named after me, believe me, I'm really humbled. I'm honored. There's been a lot of accolades, not a lot of street signs. <laughs> but thank you very much. Thank you so much, Fergie. I want to invite Alejandro and, and Hunter to come up here from St. Mary's. Rob, Kathy, and Brogan and Fergie from Count Kelsey. Great. And yes, also, sorry. Brogan and Fern. Yeah, and Brogan and Fern as well for the dedication. That clip was courtesy of my YouTube channel, which I want to say thank you to uh, my subscribers. I have now 200 subscribers on my YouTube channel, and I've tripled my audience in the last year as well. And I want to say again, thank you to Scott Crawford and the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum, Director of Operations, for having me there as a media member. And you guys can check out their website at baseballhalloffame.ca or you can give the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame a call at 519-284-1838. That's 519-284-1838 or baseballhalloffame.ca. And that was just such a wonderful uh, moment seeing Fergie Jenkins, uh, the former Major League star with the Cubs, Texas Rangers, and he originally started with the Philadelphia Phillies for coming on there. So that was just a great moment, and I hope you guys can check out my YouTube channel again. A little plug there with my latest interviews with John Olerud, Josh Barfield, Jesse Barfield, and Mike Wilner from the Toronto Star, who's a beat reporter for the Toronto Blue Jays as well. Just to let you guys know, Season 6, Episode 17 of The Next Live with CDP Sports Talk, sponsored by Barry Cullen Chevrolet, will be this Friday, June 23rd at 11 a.m. with special guest A.J. Jakubik. He's the radio play-by-play -play announcer for the Ottawa Red Blacks on TSN 1200. He's also a radio host with TSN 1200 in Ottawa on the drive weekdays from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. So I hope you guys can tune in Friday at 11 a.m. with AJ Jakubak, uh, the play-by-play -play announcer for the Ottawa Red Black. And we're going to talk some Red, Red, Black, Red Blacks football and some CFL as well. Really looking forward to that as well. 
Also, guys, since we talked about it today, you can check out this other website, cystricfibrosis.ca as well, if you'd like to make a donation there as well. You guys can also join Mike Farwell and the Mike Farwell Show weekdays, again, from 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. on City News 570 in Kitchener, Ontario as well. Before I wrap up the show, guys, I'm going to do what I normally do here. Uh, Live with CDP Sports Talk is a weekly sports and entertainment talk show uh, hosted by yours truly. Chris Pome is on weeknights at 8 p.m. on 8 p.m. Eastern on WQEE 99.1 FM. The key, the home of Southern sports and talk, the heartbeat of Atlanta. And occasionally this summer, guys, some of my shows might be preempted or later due to Columbus Hoots Baseball on uh, WQEE 99.1 FM. So if my show is preempted or going to be on a later time due to Columbus Hoots Baseball, um, I will let you guys know through my social media pages as well. Also, guys, during the weekdays on WQEE 99.1 FM, check out the Rod Peterson Show weekdays from 12 to 2 there as well. The website for the station, guys, is wqeefm.radio. 1234.com as well. Again, uh, guys, my guest today, Mike Farwell, thank you so much for coming on. You can check out his website, farwellforhire.com, in uh, his charity work for cystic fibrosis as well. Live with CDP Sports Talk is uh, live streamed on these platforms YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. In LinkedIn, and I want to say thank you everybody for watching this live streamed today as well. My website, you guys can check it out if you're interested, is beacons.ai slash Chris D. Pome. All my digital content and my previous podcast episodes uh, on audio or on my YouTube t- channel are on beacons.ai slash Chris D. Pome as well. Live with CDP Sports Talk is Sponsored by Barry Cullen Chevrolet Dealership at 905 Wood 905 Woodlawn Road West in the Guelph Auto Mall. Check out Barry Cullen again, barrycullen.com for the newest selection of new and pre-owned GM vehicles, or give them a call at 519-824-0210 or e- email them at info at barrycullen.com. Speaking of Barry Cullen Chevrolet, spring into summer at Barry Cullen Chevrolet here in Guelph with 3.99% financing for up to 60 months on select SUVs such as the Travis, the Blazer, and the Equinox, the 2023 versions of the Equinox, Blazer, and Traverse as well. Costco eligible members can receive a $750 bonus on select SUVs. More details available at barrycon.com as well and i'm still loving my 2023 chevy trailblazer rs sports model as well you guys everyone here can listen can uh, follow me on tiktok if you wish i'm on tiktok at live with cdp i post a lot of my content on there i also uh, post some of my interviews with players and coaches and promos for my show as well so that's at live with cdp on tiktok StreamYard is the official live stream provider of Live with CDP Sports Talk. If you're into webinars or podcasting, check out StreamYard.com as well. Live with CDP Sports Talk, the audio version is available on these platforms. iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Spotify for Podcasters now, Apple Podcasts, Breaker. Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Spotify, Castbox, LinkedIn, Stitcher, and Tuned In. And again, weeknights at 8 p.m. on WQEE 99.1 FM, the key in Metro Atlanta. When my uh, show is not preempted by Columbus Hoots Baseball as well. You guys can also, everyone can either email me or text me at live with CDP Sports Talk at cpome19 at gmail.com or you can text this show at 519-820-7188. I would love to hear uh, comments, questions, 
and feedback about my show live with CGP Sports Talk, which just celebrated its 291st episode today since March of 2020. And again, I want to say thank you to everybody watching this live streamed and on my audio platforms and also on WQEE 99.1 FM, the key in Metro Atlanta, the home of Southern Talk in sports. And we're going to wrap this show up, guys. Uh, again, I'm just going to say thank you so much for watching and listening to Live with CDP Sports Talk. My next show, again, sponsored by Barry Cullen Chevrolet, will be this Friday, June 23rd at 11 a.m. Eastern with my guest, A.J. Jakubic, the radio play-by-play -play announcer for the CFL's Ottawa Red Black and the uh, co-host of The Drive on TSN 1200 in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Looking forward to speaking to AJ about his broadcasting career, which has gone over 26 years, and doing various play-by-play -play sports for basketball and football, et cetera, as well. So if you're into the CFL and you're an Ottawa Red Blacks fan, please check out my show this Friday at 11 a.m. again with AJ Jakubek. Uh, the voice of the Ottawa Red Blacks. Again, I want to say thank you so much to my guest, Mike Farwell from City News 570 in Kitchener today for coming on and talking about his charity work uh, with Farwell for Hire as well. And you can check out his website again. I'm going to, before we go, we're going to put his website on here one more time. Right here, I guess I got it right here. One second, guys. You guys can also follow Mike on Twitter at Farwell, Farwell underscore WR as well. And that's about it. Uh, just one second. And also, guys, here's the uh, website, farwellforhire.com. And also, you guys can check out the website, cysticfibrosis.ca, if you'd like to make a, a charity donation as well. And I will be making a donation online to Farwell for Hire because I think it's a great cause. And I think what Mike's doing is great. And I really want to say thanks to Mike for sharing his story for how he started Farwell for Hire as well. And that's about it, guys. Uh, again, I want to say thank you to Mike Farwell for coming on. And thank you again to everybody for watching this live streamed and on my audio platforms. I hope everybody has a great afternoon. And we'll see you here Friday morning at 11 a.m., June 23rd, with AJ Jakubek, the voice of the Ottawa Red Blacks. Again, live streamed and later on my audio platforms. Have a great afternoon, everybody. And uh, we'll see you Friday at 11 a.m. with AJ Jakubek. We'll